inspired by a certain handsome hero, the four great fairies of Hyrule have come to their land's defense. And though they prefer to lounge in their flower fountains, these four massive ladies are a force to be reckoned with when they really get serious. In Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, if their playstyle is misunderstood, controlling these ladies can feel like a mess. But don't be fooled by a rough first impression. With an understanding of how to use them, the amount of utility and power that they can bring is staggering. And perhaps more so than any other character in the game, the Great Fairies have several hidden mechanics that you'll need to know about before you can really get the most out of them. Let's dive right in and see what it is they're hiding. The Great Fairy's regular attack string consists of seven attacks. They will slap to the left, slap back to the right while swapping fairies, pound down in front of them, slap left again, swap fairies again, and then send out a heart-shaped projectile, before finishing with an elongated series of heart blasts, which eventually start accumulating around themselves before, with a single finger, they pop them all. Due to the extra area damage of this heart field at the end, being able to finish the fairy's regular attack string without being interrupted is important. Something that might seem hard at first, until you learn some later details about them. For now, I'll just say that their regular attack string has a lot of potential, as their humongous size makes it naturally effective at crowd clearing just on its own. On top of this, the way that this attack string switches fairies twice is important to note, because for reasons that I'll get into a bit later, which fairy you have out is actually very important. That's for another section though. Next, in this section, we'll be taking a look at their dash attacks, aerials, and Sheikah Slate abilities. Starting with their dashes, their regular dash attack is just a pop out of their pod that sprays a damaging mist in a circle around them. While their strong dash attack will have them pull out an arm and punch in front of their pod while continuously moving. Just like everyone else, the regular dash attack is used when you want to stop and get stuck into a fight, while the strong one is for moving damage, something that can allow you to possibly gather some KOs without even having to stop. Also, there is an important element of the fairies here, because when you go into your pod, the fairy that comes out will be different, which is something that you may or may not want. If you need to move quickly but don't want to switch fairies, it might be worth it just to continuously hit the dodge button, or to wall jump and ride the wind to move around rather than going into a dash. Speaking of riding the wind, there really isn't much to say about their mid-air attacks. They actually don't really come up unless you're seeking them out. If she is mid-air, she does have the basic three regular attacks and strong attack finisher that most of the cast does, so there's nothing surprising there. Last up, their Sheikah Slate abilities, and starting with Stasis, the fairies will stop the enemies in front of them, but not to the sides and back of them. This is important if you're trying to avoid damage, but also worth noting is the fact that they stop themselves as well. But while they're frozen in time, you can start mashing X to build a charge forward. And by either waiting out the timer or pressing B to cancel out of it, this charge will send them a considerable ways ahead. Something that can be used to not only hurt your enemy, but also to get distance, because a lot of what the fairies do doesn't need them to be right up in their foes' faces, unlike a lot of the rest of the cast. Thankfully, you can also dodge cancel out of this charge before hitting X, something that becomes extremely important when trying to break weak point gauges that you've frozen, or having vulnerable enemies that you can use their unique actions on. Next up for their Cryonis, the fairies will bring out a gigantic block of ice very quickly, and then stay on top of it for a few seconds before breaking it down themselves. This is the biggest Cryonis block of the game, and it's kind of hard to not hit a charging enemy with it. Its massive size makes it easier to even fit into tighter Cryonis windows, like that of the Lionel's Charge, if you happen to be close. Next up, we have their Magnesis, which sucks in metal parts from the ground before releasing two volleys that go quite a ways forward. It's a decent ranged attack that you will always have access for regardless of which fairy is out, but they do have better ranged attacks that I'll get to later. Last up, we have their remote bombs, which function a little bit strangely. When used, you have to hit Y in order to start shooting out bombs in a line ahead of you. Luckily, this is not slow and works about the same as most remote bomb abilities. 
Next up, let's jump into her strong attacks, which is where they really become interesting. The fairy's first strong attack is a very quick shoulder bash, something that can be repeated by hitting X again in quick succession. This move is about as simple as it seems, although holding movement during it transitions the fairies into their dashing, something that can make it both good for a quick fight finisher before starting to travel elsewhere, or an aggressive way to get in your pod rather than dashing away if you're trying to cycle through which fairy you're controlling. For their second strong attack, the fairies will send out three waves in a triangular shape to their front. This goes quite a ways and is a good, fast, ranged crowd clearer. As I said before, the fairies don't necessarily want to be right up in their enemy's face, so this is a helpful little bit of range damage that can be good at the start of engagements. It's also the last strong attack that you can do without being forced to change your fairy. For their third strong attack, a second fairy will join with yours to create a heart shape with their hands, something that sends out a heart-shaped projectile that then explodes. You might not notice this at first, but this attack actually produces a status effect on your enemy, one that slows them down considerably. This effect works on every enemy, even bosses, and lasts for about 10 seconds. During this time, there's nothing to stop you from just doing this strong attack again and again and again. The slowdown is so significant that enemies are basically no longer a threat. This is just one of the several tools that the fairies have to completely avoid damage, something that allows them to get around the issue of their humongous size, making them a very big target. Also worth noting is if you let this attack completely finish without doing a dodge cancel or being hit before it ends, your fairy will change to the one that pops out to assist you. I know this all sounds silly, but when I get to the unique attack section, this will really make sense. For their fourth strong attack, the fairies blow an extended kiss to their foes, something that locks down your fairy for its duration, although you can press left or right to change where they're aiming. This can be dangerous if you're surrounded, but the sustained damage it can put out can also be worth it. Use it if you want to deal some damage and you already have yourself defended, or if you just don't care about taking the damage. For their fifth strong attack, a second fairy will pop out briefly to join your current one and begin sucking in enemies in a circular area around them. And it's worth noting that enemies can be sucked in even after the pod has appeared to be closed. After bringing all your enemies into this pod, the fairies will then deal damage to them before bursting open. Incredibly, this attack can also suck in bosses, including giant ones like Hinox's. Honestly, this is a spectacular attack. It swerves around the fairy's main weakness of being a huge target, while also dealing a lot of damage in a very large area. It's also worth noting that this is another attack that force switches your fairy at the end of it. However, unlike her third strong attack, there is no way of knowing who you're going to get. The chosen fairy is truly random. The one who pops out earlier to join you in this attack is purely a visual effect. On top of this, the damage that this attack deals is often enough to force out weak point gauges. Truly, this is a fantastic move. For their sixth and final strong attack, the great fairies will dive into their pod, from which you can then move around freely. The fairies will stay like this for about 8 seconds, during which you can use the Y button to attack with quick bursts of area damage. You can also finish this off early by hitting X. Unfortunately, just about any source of damage will knock you out of this channeled attack. Naturally, this attack will change the fairy that comes out at the end. But if you really wanted to, you could also choose to dash cancel after doing a regular attack in this mode, something that will leave you controlling the fairy that you saw pop out. If you're really in need of a certain unique effect and happen to be in this move anyway, this is an extremely roundabout way to choose your fairy. As for this attack itself, while it is easy to be knocked out of, the damage that it can deal is considerable. Just like their fifth strong attack, this move can also force out weak point gauges. While this isn't one of my favorite things that they can do, if you're playing in co-op, the vulnerabilities that this attack bring can completely vanish, something that will then allow it to really shine. Next up, we have the fairy's unique actions, where things are really going to get interesting. The big thing with the great fairies is that each of them has a different unique action, 
and, although you may not notice it at first, some of them have special effects that can completely change their playstyle. Please remember that at the end of every unique action, your fairy will be force random swapped if you allow it to finish. So, dodge cancelling to keep your unique action with the fairy you want will become more important than ever. Also, I understand if you probably haven't memorized all four of these fairies' names, so on top of their names, I'll also describe them by hair and other details to help you quickly remember what you'll be getting. Kesa, the fairy with straight, pink hair and dark skin, will sprout plants behind her before sending them off in a volley straight ahead. The damage and range of this attack is ridiculous, and if damage is what you're after, using this attack consecutively by dodging after the plant sprout can be really, really efficient. You can basically snipe your enemies down while being at absolutely zero risk, with a dodge cancel maneuver that is about as broken as the one Girahim had in Hyrule Warriors 1. Next up, Miha, the fairy with curly purple hair, will spawn a small circle of flowers around her right as a dome-shaped shield appears around the fairy. This shield, which has no time limit, will fully absorb the next attack that hits the fairies. And once you have upgraded the fairies in the post-game, this shield will actually absorb two attacks. This is yet another way for the fairies to get around being such a big target, and I hope you can see that early on this is a very important tool in their arsenal. Third, we have Terra, the white-haired fairy with several braids and a hairband, who has the simplest unique action to understand. She will quite simply create a giant field of flowers, doing damage in a large area. If you don't dodge cancel out of this, she, like many of the other fairies, will release a second volley of flowers. But of course, dodge spamming just the first volley can be just as effective. This, like Kesa's action, can be a free source of easy repeatable damage, with such a tremendous range that you'll have plenty of time to react if the enemy starts getting aggressive. Last up, we have Kotera, the fairy with blonde, thick hair. If you didn't know, I'm happy to be the one to tell you that Kotera's unique action is absolutely broken. She creates two volleys of flowers to her front, both of which can be interrupted with a dodge. If you use this move, although it can be hard to see, hitting the enemies with the second volley of flowers will put a small blue status effect on them. What this does is indicate that they have Kotera's effect, which lowers your enemy's defenses and lasts for about the next 15 seconds, although using her unique action again will refresh this effect's duration. While a single use of this unique action makes only a marginal difference in your enemy's defenses, the very important detail here is that this effect stacks. Repeated dodge cancel spamming of it, for example for the duration of one stasis use, can improve your subsequent damage by a ton. Observe this Moblin's damage first without the effect, and then now after using Kotera's action four times on it. I hope by now you can see what I meant when I said that when understood, the potential of the Great Fairies is staggering. Let's jump over to her weapons to finish this guide off. The Great Fairy has three possible weapons, and going in ascending maximum power, they are the Dazzling Bangles, Luxurious Bangles, and Extravagant Bangles. I'll put a quick chart on screen to reveal each weapon's hidden level 25 and 30 seals, but I'll be focusing on her strongest weapon for a build recommendation. Due to her Extravagant Bangles having the star-shaped seal strong attack damage, and the square-shaped seal damage to locked on target, you may want to go for four square seals and two star seals. The fairy doesn't really need improvements to her damage, she already has effects and her moveset that can bring her a lot more than any seal. So instead, speeding her up with the attack speed seal is very important. Another square seal you may want to give her is Perfect Dodge Timing Window, something that can help you if you're having a problem with them taking too much damage. Because the fairies often lack the ability to completely dodge out of the way of attacks, getting a better flurry attack window can help negate the effects of a mistimed dodge. For her one star seal, although I personally would probably just go with another strong attack damage up, if you're going the previous route with an improved dodge window, flurry rush damage would work in tandem with that playstyle. And there we have it, the great fairies. Let's go ahead and finish this off. 
Even when it comes to other Warriors games, there are few movesets that I've seen that are as polarizing as the Great Fairies before you understand them and after you understand them. Despite first impressions, in truth, Age of Calamity's Great Fairies are a force to be reckoned with, and in some ways can actually be argued to be the most powerful warrior in the game. When you know what you're doing, they are a self-sustaining damage juggernaut that can play with their enemies just as freely as these four aloof giants probably would be doing on the actual battlefields of Hyrule. All in all, they are a complex and slightly random playstyle that comes with a somewhat steep learning curve. However, once it clicks with you, you will be able to control every encounter in ridiculously powerful ways. I can tell you from personal experience that if you take the time to understand them, the rewards are just as bountiful as the Great Fairies themselves. So, what do you think about the Great Fairies? They really have become one of my favorite playstyles in this game. There's just so much detail to them. For example, I didn't even mention the chance for Melania the Horse God to appear in weak point smashes, which creates a slightly different attack. If there were any details about the Fairies playstyle that I missed, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'll be putting any good details that I forgot about in a pinned comment at the top. Thank you so much for watching everybody, and I'll see you next time. Special thanks goes out to my top patrons DW7 Still Rules, Henry Gutierrez, Peeve Delatias, Radiant Archiver, Ryan Poe, and True Tactician, as well as to all of my other patrons. Thank you all very much.